Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Cheers. <clears throat> That's a Mexican cerveza. Cooper's nice one. Don't have any lime left, unfortunately. But still, still a nice beer. Cheers, guys. How you doing? What's going on? How you doing? What are you brewing? That's the question. Um, I'm uh, kind of excited. Well, sort of. I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed and I'm a little excited at the same time. I I got everything ready tonight to bottle my SJ Poor challenge entry, uh, beer entry. And, uh, you know, the funny thing is, I haven't, um, I haven't bottled in so long that I actually had to go out and buy a couple things. Um, I had to buy the, uh, where is that thing? Yeah, I had to buy one of these, these bottling wands. I've actually, um, I know I was talking about bottling from the keg, and I could I could use this. People do that's what they do. They use the contraption sort of that I made, and then they, but they and they use one of these to fill the bottles. Um, I've just decided to bottle the bottle the traditional way um, because the beer that I'm making can be quite foamy, and I'm just worried. I don't want to. It's the only beer I've got to put in this. I haven't got anything. I'm not going to throw my What's that? Cooper's English Bitter? I'm not going to put that in there. I mean, you know, this is supposed to be the beer to stand the test of time, right? So, uh, not that the, these kits don't make good beer, but, you know, you, you, I, I don't have to explain it, that to you. Uh, you know, you want to make something, you know, a little more than just a, a beer kit. You want to do something special, make one of your great beers. And I just didn't want to... Uh, you know, I didn't want to risk, uh, you know, kegging it and then trying to, to bottle it from there and having something go wrong. Because if that happened, I got nothing else to put in and it's getting kind of late in the game. So I got to get my beer submitted. So I've got myself a bottling bucket here. I did, I've got a, um, that's a long time ago from a guy called Paul from Minnesota. He came and brought me a bunch of stuff, and he brought me this, one of the things he brought me was this bottling bucket, which I've never used. Because right when he brought this, after just right after he brought this, I started kegging. So, um, put that down there. You know, it's got the spigot and everything, so it's brand new. And, um, so that's great. It's, it's, this is actually from Midwest Homebrew Supplies. They donated it, and he brought it to me. Um, it's a brewer's best... Pale ale or ale pale. That's what it says. Anyway, that's my bottling bucket. So I'm gonna I'm gonna batch prime my beer. I've never done it before. I've uh, never batch primed before because when I used to bottle my beer, I mean I've been kegging for what three years, four years now maybe? God, it's the time's flying. It's unbelievable. And uh, before that I was just priming my bottles. You know, the teaspoon, half a teaspoon, or whatever, and psh, 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 you know, that's what I did for years, and ever since I started brewing, and I, I, that's just the way I did it. Um, I felt that it was just as fast, just as simple, you know, instead of siphoning your beer, and you know, but there is issues with a the consistency of the of the carbonation throughout the batch of bottles. Because you you have to try and measure the sugar you know in each bottle, and B, uh, in, uh, infection, because you're you're putting priming sugar in there like say you know dextrose or whatever that's been exposed to the air, and what does yeast love? Sugar, right? So if there's wild yeast floating around, um, oh, you know you've got the window open and. Got a gale wind blowing through, and there's wild yeast in there. I don't, I don't have a problem believing that it could, it could attach itself to your sugar, your dextroses, even if you've got them. Like I've got one here that's been opened. You see, so you know, there's, I mean, it's been kind of wrapped up, but it's still not airtight, and there's an opening here. And so, who, who says that something's not gotten in there? Some sort of a wild yeast. So 
so that's part of the reason why and I used to sanitize my bottles and everything and I would bottle my beer and then every once in a while I'd get a bottle that was infected and I think why why would that be if I sanitized them all the same way and I filled them and capped them all the exact same way why would one be infected and I mean infected like you couldn't drink it you know well that's probably what because you're putting that sugar in each bottle and you're every time you spoon one in who knows what's attached you know so anyway that's why I've decided not to bottle prime this time when I bottle this beer I'm gonna batch prime it um of course there's risks inherent risks with that too you're transferring the beer to another vessel so you've got to make sure that that's sanitized but I have no problem with that I've, I've got well, I've got a little bit of star sand here I think I can manage to see can you guys see that? Yeah, there's a few bottles of it up there. So I think I can manage to, you know, to get the sanitation thing happening. Um, and just, yeah, I'm just going to bottle it the traditional way. So, but I'm not looking forward to it, you know. I used to hate bottling. This is the only part of this whole challenge thing that I'm not looking forward to, is bottling the beer and then waiting for it to, uh, to carbonate. Now... I don't know if I'm supposed to let this information out, but I'm going. I'm going to. I had to buy bottles, and um, I don't know if I'm supposed to. T I, oh, okay, whatever. I mean, I, you guys are probably going to know what the which one's mine anyway. But if you if you get my beers, if you're in the challenge, um, I don't have. I don't keep bottles because I I got rid of them all because I don't use them. So I had to buy them, and I, what I did was I decided I had a choice, of course, glass or plastic. And there's people are advocates of glass, you know, bottles. There's a lot of purists out there, or, or, or not purists, but, you know, home brewers out there that just use glass when they bottle because it's, you know, they worry about the plastic and whatnot. Um... I couldn't really, I couldn't go for buying the glass bottles. Um, so I went out and I bought these. Now these are brand spanking new, nice little pl plastic PET bottles, very dark, nice and light, and they're not going to break during shipping. Okay? And, and that's just a decision I made. Um, these are 500 milliliter bottles. And I've got the brand new caps that haven't been used yet. They're the virgin caps. When you when you strap them on, they go and that little thing comes off the bottom and it you know, shows that it's never been opened and it's the first time it's ever been used. So these are brand spanking new. So whoever gets my beers in the challenge is going to get a nice brand new <laughs> bottle. So yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't even have to sanitize these, although of course I will. Um, but they're, uh, yeah, they've never been used. So... Um, and that's just the decision. Get in there. That's the decision I made. So now you know what kind of bottles they are. You're probably going to know which one's mine, but I don't care. So, um, did I let the cat out of the bag? I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. Um, now, with the 500 uh, milliliter bottles, um, the carbonation drops aren't going to work because they're made for. Uh, you'd have to use one and a half. Of, uh, carbonation drops in each of those bottles and you can't break those things in half so that's why I have to batch prime if I could if I could have found you know three 340 milliliter bottles like 12 ounce plastic bottles then I would have just with the carbonation drops boom that would have been it you know no problem um, but I couldn't I couldn't find those so um, there's there's a lot of uh, videos I have to film down here in, in the brew dungeon and one of the things that was kind of that's been kind of holding me back from doing it was the lighting. Uh, normally, uh, I'll just show you. Oh, by the way, I'm sporting my Hophead shirt, Hophead uh, the brew supply, home brew supply shirt. I'm um, just you know just trying to get through all my shirts here and advertise to everybody that sent me his stuff. Um, the the light down here used to be up there. See those two pieces of wood? 
right there and right there. And the light was strapped onto those two pieces of wood there. And of course, when I film, the camera sits, goes over there. Okay, so it, and it aims this way, right? All right, so the light being up there, I was getting not, wasn't getting proper light. So I wanted to move it. And what I've done is I've moved it over up here so that it's shining right, right on to me when I, when I film over here. Now that took me a long time to move that thing because first of all, they're heavy and I had to take out the ballast and, and where am I here? Hello? Oh, there we are. Um, and, 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 you know, take it all apart and unwire everything, um, move all the wires around where it's hooked in, where it's hooked into the hydro or the electricity and then get it up there. Um, and I have a bad shoulder, so, you know, it's hard, it was hard for me to, and I didn't really have anyone to help me. So, um, that was something that I, it took me a while to, to get done. <laughs> so now that that's there and the only reason it's there is so that I can film videos over here of me doing some stuff. Now, some of the brewing videos I have to film up in the kitchen. There's just no way I can, I can brew certain batches of beer down here. I don't have a strong enough stove. But um, other videos that I want to make um, will be done uh, down here. Um, so that's that done. And it looks much better now that when you have the camera over there that you know the light's coming directly on to, to me and what I'm doing here. Um, that's part of the reason why the Pat Max video hasn't been done because uh, not only was the apple cider not ready last week when I was going to do that, I haven't checked it this week, I guess I should probably check, it's probably ready now, um, but I wanted to have the proper lighting. I did make a beer uh, using the Pat, Pat Max uh, caps. Of course, you, you know which ones I'm talking about because a lot of you guys are bugging me. What are you going to do with the Pat Max video? Um, you know, the brewing caps, some of them are missing because I've got some stuff going on, you know, with these. But, um, I took, he sent me some dry malt extract and, uh, some hops. So I took a couple of uh, two liter pop bottles and I made, I made a batch of beer. And, um, it was, it was good. Uh, the only problem with it was, is that I didn't siphon the beer uh, from those containers into other containers because I didn't have the other containers to do it with so I just decided to go ahead and and Serve the beer out of those Primary containers and of course I had all kinds of things like little bits of yeast and little bits of you know uh, Hot fl floating, you know depending on how careful I was pouring it. So I didn't really want to um, review it on video because uh, I didn't think it was that presentable um, not because the caps didn't work, because I'll tell you right now, the beer was delicious. It was good. It was properly carbonated. It was, it was lots of hops and flavor involved and it, it just worked out really well. Um, just at, you know, my lack of, of attention to, to, you know, getting it from primary to secondary, um, it was a, a little less presentable, let's just say. So the next time I make a batch of beer with, with that method, I will siphon it and I will show it to you guys and show you how it turned out. But uh, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to wait uh, to make the Pat Pat Max video until that's ready because I want to get that video done soon. I've got the apple juice upstairs um, and just have to clear a space here and we're going to do that and. The nice part is that I've got a batch already going, so I'll be able to pour it out and show you what it turns out like. Um, and there's no hops in that, so there won't be all these little bits of stuff floating around in it, like there was the beer. Um, I still drank the beer though. I still drank it, it was good. It was very good, I, I enjoyed that. It was a great way to make simple beer um, with, with lots of hops in it. It's a great way to do that. So. Um, let's see, what have I got going back here? Um, let's take a look. I can't go too far with this camera because it's actually plugged in because the battery was dead. Uh, that's wine there. Actually, I've been drinking that a little bit. I'm going to actually put that into the, uh, 
package that into some uh, some um, bladders, um, dispensing bladders, so that I can, you know, pour it out of those instead of siphoning it out of that. But there's my SJ pour beer. There's what's that doing there? That's my SJ pour beer. The heat belt is is timed. It's not on all the time. It's just timed every half, three quarters of an hour. It comes on for just a little while. It's a little bit cold down here. I don't even know what temperature that's sitting at. Can you guys, can we see that? It's 68 or something like that, I think. Is it 68? I think something like that. Yeah, I think it is. So that's fine. That's not That's not too bad. Uh, over here, we've got, uh, this is just a Cooper's English Bitter that I've got. And here I've got a Mangrove Jacks um, cider. And I have no idea what that is on the top there. Um, it was finished fermenting. I, I put the the flavor package in and the, uh, the, the, the sweetening package. And I'm, I'm afraid to check what that... I don't have a clue. It doesn't smell bad. It smells great. So I don't know what to do about that. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna siphon it into a keg, and I'll just avoid that part, that bit there. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened there. I think I'm gonna call them and ask them about that. Mm, I want to do another one because uh, something went wrong with that one. Uh, it, it, it tastes fine, but I don't know. Anyway. I'll just call them. There's a, there's a, you know, if you can just give them a call and ask them. Maybe it's perfectly normal. I have no idea. You know, I did everything. I did everything the, the way they said the, the, by the book. So, um, it'll be fine. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Once it's carbonated, we were having a taste of it flat, and it was good. So, um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Once it's it'll be even better once it's carbonated and cold as well. So. That's all I've got, really. I've got all my stuff set up to do my bottling tomorrow for my SG Pour beer. Got my little thing to measure out my sugar for my priming, my bottling bucket, my sanitizer, my stuff, my tubes, and everything. Bottles are here, and I'm all set to go and get that bottled. That's the part that I'm excited about. I want to get that done. I just wish I had gotten it done tonight, that's all, because I've been kind of procrastinating in doing that, so. Um, but it'll have a chance to sit in the bottles for at least three weeks before it gets uh, sent to uh, its primary destination. Um, and then from there, you know, if I make it past the Canadian, you know, the, the primary stage of this thing, then I'm going to have to send a whole bunch more out. And I wanted to say something, you know, I kind of, the last part, the thing I wanted to say before we end this video is that I was kind of going around on YouTube, you know, a little bit watching some of the other home brewers talk about their SJ Pour beers. And, uh, um, you know, some people were trying their beers and tasting them and whatnot, and they looked great and lots of foam and everything on them. Um, and, you know, talking about how they were a little worried that, you know, <laughs> how it was going to taste and whatnot. I wouldn't worry. I did, you know, because I mean, I didn't even spend a lot of time on my beer. Okay, not as much time as some people did, apparently. I mean, I'm I'm worried now because you know I'm like, holy crap! Some of these people really went all out. They they were put the coconut and vanilla and you know this and that and cloves and you know, holy crap! I didn't do any of that. I, I didn't. I just made a beer that I know is a good beer. Um. And and uh, and that's that. So I, I you know I don't know how far I'm going to get in this, uh, I'm, but I'm not really worried about it because I know I can make good beer. You know you can make good beer, and uh, and that's all that really matters. This competition is fun. It's a great way to get your beers out there and get some beers back and taste some other people's beers. For those of you who've never received beer mail before or have re not received very much beer mail, mail before, this is going to be great. It's going to be exciting. You're going to be able to sit down and, and enjoy other beers from all over. 
depending on how far you make it into the thing. But you know, if you don't make it into the final com into the final part of it, don't worry about it. You know, just don't don't be like hurt by it, because you know we've got people tasting you know beers, you know, with different opinions and different uh, you know um, preferences. And for all I know, somebody who gets one, one of my beers doesn't like the style of beer that I made at all. Never mind, you know, whether it's a good beer or not. So I think that's part of, you know, just being laid back about it and just trying to have fun with it. And if, you're, if your beer doesn't make it far, then you know it's good beer or you wouldn't have submitted it. And that's, that's the way I look at it. I wouldn't be submitting this this beer because I've already tasted this out of the fermenter. It's fine. It tastes beautiful. I wouldn't be putting into the uh, challenge if it wasn't a good beer. Um, but some people they got these big setups and they've put all this effort and ingredients and everything into it. And who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? That's part of the fun of it is the suspense of trying to figure out what's going to happen. And I want to thank personally S.J. Poor um, for doing this, for for m making this happen. And I mean, there's I know there's a lot of other people involved that are also helping out with the hubs and their sponsors and everything. But you know, he really came up with the idea, and um, and I think it's a it's just it's a for lack of a better better word, it's a wonderful idea. And. Uh, and it's just a good example of the type of people that we've got in this YouTube, or should I say BrewTube, community that we have here. And that I'm proud, proud to be part of. And you should be too. So cheers. Have fun. Brew good beer. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. Brew home brew. Brew good. Brew your own beer. Uh, keep your mugs full. All the other sayings that are out there. And uh, do all that, have fun with it. And the bottom line is if you like what you're brewing, then you are doing the right thing. And that's for you to decide and you only. Um, outside of that, it's a lot of fun to send your beers out and have other people, other people try them and try other people's beers. It's a lot of fun. And cheers to SJ Poor for you know, inventing this idea. That's all I have to say. And I think I probably am running out of time, so I should go and edit this damn video. <laughs> Actually, it's not going to get edited. It's just going to get it uploaded in public so you guys can watch it. But, just, you know, thanks for watching these Homebrew Wednesday videos. There's lots of them out there. And thanks for being part of it. And thanks for being supportive and nice and, and having a great time uh, watching other people talk about brewing. And uh, I have much more coming out, coming up on here. I've been, we've got, the snow's melted, the, we've got to rake leaves, and we've got to clean the backyard, and there's, you know, just a lot to do in the spring around a house. If you own a house, you know what it's like. Um, so uh, that's one of the reasons why I've been, you know, it's very difficult to find time to set aside to make these videos. But I've got lots of stuff here that needs to be brewed. And a couple of things have already been brewed. I just haven't f put the videos up yet and edited them and whatnot. So it's happening. And I got my lighting. So there you have it. Cheers, guys. 17, if you will. And brew that beer. Cheers. <laughs>